So I just want to add, just before we do the dance, um, a little bit of context, a bit of history background, um, and uh, in sort of style and interpretation of uh, the grazing mask. So uh, it was first published in 1651 in uh, the Playford um, uh, Dancing Master book. Um, so that's the first time we have music and written choreography to go together. However, we um, the tune we know is earlier. Uh, whether or not this is the same choreography, whether or not it bore any similarities, who knows. Um, uh, but the tune we know was used um, in a mask, a court mask, um, from the time of King James I. So the early Jacobean ones, in fact, 1613 uh, is the date. Um, it was what we believe uh, an anti-mask section uh, as part of the many days of celebration of his daughter Elizabeth um, to the Emperor Palatine, uh, Frederick V. So um, they were uh, many as, again, it comes back to the barristers, um, the barristers in the four uh, inns, Gray's Inn, Lincoln's Inn, Inner Temple and Middle Temple, would team up two and two and they were sort of trying to outdo each other probably, um, no embarrasses, and they would create, uh, they would pay for themselves, they would rehearse them and they would perform in honour of the king or whatever the celebration is. Could be Twelfth Night, could be uh, Shrove Tide, in this case his daughter's wedding, so it's a pretty big affair. Uh, we know that this tune was used, It was it's called Grey's in Mask, so it's pretty likely that it was uh, the Grey's Inn um, dance. We also know that it was uh, potentially danced by um, a selection of baboons or um, uh, and or May kings and queens, shepherds, shepherdesses. They were sort of as many anti-mask uh, sections would have been. They were grotesque, they were pastoral, uh, they were full of character. Um, so, uh, and they were very, very lively. Um, very acrobatic uh, and I think certainly this tune although it can be led it can be played quite solemnly uh, it can be done quite sedately there are moments where actually it really picks up and it can be a uh, it can be quite exciting to do it and you can and you can sort of see how the honoring and the interpretation the embracing could be um, could be dramatically played around with to potentially tell a little bit of a story or a narrative um, swapping who knows swapping partners and all sorts um, uh, so uh, we know that the tune existed. Uh, we know that it was, you know, it's potentially performed in 1613. It crops up again in the first edition of Playford in 1651 um, uh, with this choreography. Uh, my, I, my feeling is is that this isn't the choreography from the mask. Uh, that may well have been something which was bespoke. Uh, well of course it is something that was bespoke and something was created for that mask to as to to help that that tell the story of that mask to tell the um to get the allegory and to get the the uh, the intention across that um we are honoring elizabeth and the emperor palatine and indeed james himself um but for playford by the time the country dances first came out they were distributed far and wide and they were something for to be accessible for for all to enjoy so style interpretation. Now, I have deliberately worn my corset uh, so I can have a sort of an upright position because the um, people dancing these, regardless of st standing and status, although I do think to think that these country dances were only for lower classes is a, is a misinterpretation. I think they were largely aristocratic, um, uh, although enjoyed by an opening uh, middle class. Um, it was only people who could afford to dance who really could learn to dance and then um, do it. Um, but with a, you would wear a corset basically across all classes uh, or stays. Uh, it gives it gives an ease for elevation then. Although don't sink into your corset, always pull up. Keep that elevation, the openness across the chest and keep with the arms, the idea that you've got a grapefruit in your armpit so they're alive and they're working. You can, you're a little bit free, you can, of course it's hard, by no means restrictive. So uh, embrace, embrace the corset. Um, uh, the, uh, but that doesn't stop you, you have 
two interpretations of a nice, graceful, dignified, keeping that breath in your arm, a little bit of swagger, although not the same as the early Tudor, but um, uh, uh, you can have a sedateness, can have a solemnity about it, or it can be still a pull up, still with openness across your chest, um, uh, still like you've got a chain attached to your sternum to pull you out, your shoulders back, still with life in your arms. It can have a sense of lift, a sense of um, speed, of a different dynamic. Um, there is, in my opinion, no right or wrong. If you were to perform this dance, you can do it in different ways. Um, so that is, uh, and it can be played in different ways, which leads to how you dance it differently as well. Um, so that's where it came from. And that's a little um, insight into how you might interpret some of the steps. Because Playford only wrote them down. He didn't tell you how to do them because you can't do that with dance, it's really hard.